Well, let's play this uh, this Buttigieg clip here. Um, Buttigieg finally on the ground in East Palestine. Uh, he was. It took him three weeks, and he came the day after Trump, which I, I don't think people are going to forget. And Biden still has not been there. Um, but this was this was his message where he essentially implores the railroads to stop fighting regulation where my take would be why don't you impose your will on them as the head of the department of transportation but you know he's a smooth talker let's see how he 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 uh frames this but also norfolk southern and the other freight rail companies need to stop fighting us every time we try to do a regulation in order to hold them accountable and their other railroad companies accountable for their safety record. And what we've seen is industry goes to Washington and they get their way. They got their way on the ECP rule. They got their way on a Christmas tree of regulatory changes that the last administration made on its way out the door in December of 2020. I think they're getting their way on the fines being too low. I'm sorry, but uh, if the biggest fine we can charge on a violation is $250,000 or, or less, and that's an egregious hazmat violation to get somebody killed, that is not enough for a multi-billion dollar company. Well, we're acting on it with the authorities we have and calling on members of Congress to act on, a, on it with the authorities they have, and the railroads not to wait on us to require them to do the right thing on their own. Three equal parties in this in this process. Yeah, we're all partners. Yeah, we're right. all just working together. We've got to just sync up, and it's the work. It's a workflow problem, right? right. You know, yeah. I mean, they they just need a Slack and a three joint uh, channel where they can communicate more effectively. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's that's exact. That's the exactly the mindset here, though. Is that is that the you know the railroads are are partners in this. Um, the uh, and when you come to it with that. Um, point of view like all you can really think to do when you're up there at the at the microphone is be like we need them to be better partners like we need them and 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 you know in what world are is any industry let alone the railroad in what world is any industry going to go to the federal regulators and say make us make us do better or like like please please be harder on us that's not their job um to stop fighting us is a loser message. It's a complete loser message. And yeah. especially when you cannot articulate, you say on the way out the door, they got a, a, a Christmas tree of regulatory, you know, freebies from the Trump administration. So on your way in the door, where were your, where were your new regulations? I mean, not to get sidetracked on the, the rhetorical device there, but I just, <laughs> who, you get a Christmas tree? It's more right. like what's under the Christmas tree. Yeah, I think he, right, you know, he's, he's usually very articulate, but I think he got yeah. a little, that one got a little lost on him. Also, yeah. like, can I just put, enter in this conversation, like, Pete Buttigieg's dad is a Marxist, like, expert on Antonio Gramsci. He has no excuse not to know this. Right. Wow. I mean, that's just, but but he is a McKinsey consultant through and through. I've been saying this, you know, for a few weeks now. It's not really as much incompetence from his end, in my opinion. It's that he's ideologically much more aligned with the 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 rail railways, and he was so ideologically aligned with the freight rail, I should say, that he, that's why he was so slow to understand what this looked like politically for the Biden administration for his own presidential ambitions, because he just he wanted to kind of keep a, a cordial relationship where they're working as partners, as you say, Alex. Um, yeah. And and it's just again the optics of it too. You know, we need them to step up. What what would have been strong would have been a week or so ago just announce your efforts for regulatory uh, uh, clawbacks or for uh, what you were going to do action-wise. It's, ju it's right. just passive language that works in a boardroom. Yeah. It definitely doesn't work right. on the stump. And I, 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 I think it's, it's so, and again, it's, it's so against his nature to be populist and to say, um, I think even getting to the point where he is up there saying like, 
they're bad partners is like just not in his nature. I think that's it's right. difficult for him. Yes, yeah, so this is a, <laughs> it's an improvement for him. Right. Yeah, and I think like that that for him counts as like fiery populist rhetoric, <laughs> and um, you know it's got to be frustrating because if your worldview says if we pursue efficiency and we work in good faith with industry, then um, they will work in good faith with us. And, and, you know, everything will, if we align ourselves, government and industry working hand in hand, that'll work out best for everyone. If that's what your worldview says, um, no, you can't deal with a crisis like this. You just can't because it, it doesn't compute. Yeah. And, you know, it is, also, it should be noted, and it doesn't really change the political optics of it, but, you know, Donald Trump is only there because it's an opportunity for him to hit Biden. Right. Uh, if he were in office, this would not be where he would be right now. He would be downplaying it. But right. that doesn't change that reality that when you're the 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 group, in the party in power and the administration, that you have to anticipate that disasters that happen under your watch are going to be seized on politically um and the, the again just to it was i think a significant miscalculation and the republicans have been just flailing about um for a few months now especially now that you know kevin mccarthy is is this completely limp and ineffective leader in the house they can't coalesce behind what they want to hold the economy hostage over with the debt ceiling. They were saying it was it, in cl behind closed doors. It was going to be Medicare and Social Security cuts. <laughs> but then Biden called them out in the, in the State of the Union. And they're unable to really do that now. Now it's, oh, snap work requirements, which is just like, you know, easy mode for the Republican yeah. Party. <laughs> but now they they feel that they have some sort of, uh, you know, foot in the door here so to speak uh, this was a real unforced error by biden yeah no i completely agree yeah